Hey y'all, today's video is always a fun one. I'm gonna be sharing some Halloween themed dinners. So if you are wanting to make your Halloween dinner a little extra special, I have got five options for you to consider. And if you don't celebrate Halloween, these are still really great recipes regardless. And you could easily adapt any of these to fit any holiday theme. First up, I'm gonna be making a chicken pot pie. This chicken pot pie recipe has been a family favorite for several years now. It is absolutely Absolutely delicious. So to my large skillet, I've melted down five tablespoons of butter and I've added in just a little bit of some diced celery. I almost always have a bag in my freezer that I can pull out and it works perfect in recipes like this. I saute that celery for a few minutes to defrost it and let it start to get tender. And then I added in about a third cup of some plain all-purpose flour and I'm continuing to whisk that and it's going to get really pasty and thick. That's what you want. Just let it continue cooking for a few minutes and then you'll need to add in two cups of chicken broth or you can do like me and do two cups of water and two teaspoons of some chicken bouillon powder. So with my silicone whisk, I'm just getting that bouillon powder really broken up in there. I've got my heat on about a medium high heat. And as soon as it starts to simmer, it is going to instantly thicken up. And then here I'm hitting it with about a quarter cup of some half and half. Now we're gonna season it up. So I'm gonna be adding in some Laurie's garlic salt. That is one of my absolute favorite seasonings. I use it in pretty much everything. I'm also gonna be doing some poultry seasoning, lemon pepper, and some regular black pepper. I'm just eyeballing the spices. I've made it so many times. I've pretty much got it down pat, but I will have the recipe to this linked down below in my description box if you need exact measurements. So I'm gonna be using some onion powder. I almost forgot it, but if you would rather use real onions, just saute it with the celery instead. Now, typically for this recipe, I do use frozen mixed vegetables, but this time I wanted to do two of the small cans of peas and carrots that I drained. And honestly, we liked it even better, but it's good either way. I also did shred up a whole rotisserie chicken earlier that day, stuck it in my fridge, and all I had to do was dump it in the skillet when it was dinner time. It is very, very easy, and I'm just folding everything together to make sure that that gravy is coating all of the chicken and vegetables, and this is the consistency that you are looking for. It's perfect. I do cook this in a cast iron skillet, and this one is 10 inches for reference. I've added a little bit of vegetable oil to the bottom, and I'm just brushing the bottom and sides to make sure that nothing's gonna stick. You will need a box of pie crust. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I bought the Kroger brand, and we liked it just as good as name brand. Um, I never listened to the instructions when it says to let it sit out to room temperature. I've never had an issue with cracking before, um, but it wasn't a big deal at all. I had it fixed right up in less than a minute, so looks good as new. I just formed that to fit the pan, and then I dumped out all of that chicken pot pie filling, and I'm just smoothing out the top. Now, on a typical regular day, I would just, you know, put the second pie crust on top of the skillet. I'd kind of fold the sides under to make it fit better. And then I would just cut a little X on the top to vent it. But since we are making this Halloween themed, I have these little Halloween cookie cutters. I chose the bat and the little ghost. And I'm just going to go around and make as many of these that I can until I run out of dough, basically. It's very easy to do. I bought these off of Amazon like two or three years ago, and they're just so handy. And like I said in the beginning of the video, you can literally use any cookie cutter for this, any design or shape. So make it your own. But we do love Halloween here. Um, and Halloween is also my daughter's birthday. So we just, we go hard over here. But I'm just gonna take those little shapes and place it all over the top of the pot pie filling.
Lastly, I have just made a quick little egg wash. So it's just one egg beaten with a small amount of water and I'm taking my silicone brush and I'm just brushing that egg wash all over the top pie crust. It's gonna give it a really nice glossiness and it's also gonna help it turn nice and golden brown, which is what you want. You don't want it to be pale on top. So my oven is preheated to 350 degrees and I'm gonna pop this in anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. And you wanna make sure to let it rest for at least 15 minutes before you serve it. That way it doesn't just completely fall apart. Um, it doesn't really matter, but if you want it to look nice, just let it rest. But I was super pleased with how that turned out. Super cute. It's always delicious. And we love to serve it with homemade mashed potatoes. I also made some cupcakes with just some box cake mix and some jarred frosting that came with the sprinkles. But the kids got a big kick out of that and it was just super delicious. We may be the minority, but we love these Chef Boyardee pizza kits. I think they are one of the best little pantry staples. They are so quick and easy, and we just love the taste of the crust and the pizza sauce, which is why we continue to buy it. This isn't something that I was like raised on that I remember anyways, but I do remember my mother-in-law used to make these all the time when I was like a teenager and that's when I fell in love with these and I've just been buying them ever since. So you get two packages of crust mix in the box and the can of pizza sauce. Uh, I pretty much always mix the two packets together. You just add in some warm water, mix it with a fork, um, just follow the directions on the back of the box. I've added a little bit of olive oil and I'm just kind of, you know, tossing it back and forth so that it doesn't dry out. I've covered it with a dish towel and I'm gonna let it rest. I think it's for like five minutes or so. I've got my largest cookie sheet out. I've sprayed it with my olive oil spray. And since it sprays out kind of weird, I'm just going back in with my clean hands and I'm spreading that out better to make sure that nothing's going to stick. Now, if you do use the two packets of crust mix like I do, it's going to be a thicker crust. So you want to keep that in mind. If you like yours to be on the thinner side, you definitely want to make two pizzas in two separate pans. Honestly, I do prefer a thinner crust and I guess I just forget how much touch these bake up after it's done cooking. So if I can remember next time, I'll probably make the two pizzas myself. But regardless, it's still always really, really good. So I put quite a bit of that pizza sauce on there. I've never tasted this brand of pizza sauce before. It's on the saltier side, which is why I think we like it so much. Some of them tend to be sweeter, which really isn't our cup of tea, but you know, to each their own. But what I do highly recommend is making sure you use some bottled Parmesan cheese on top of the pizza sauce. I swear it makes it taste so much better. And typically I would use shredded mozzarella cheese, but for this theme and purpose, I wanted a yellow cheese. So I did some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. So now to make it Halloween themed, I'm going to need a cutting board, a straw, and a pack of mozzarella cheese slices. So here I'm laying out six of those cheese slices and I'm going to take my other ghost cookie cutter. This one is bigger. I got this one at Walmart several years ago and it worked perfect for this purpose. So what we had left over, I put back in the pack and we had some interesting looking sandwiches for the next week. But with that straw, I'm just going to make two eyes and the mouth, which it works really good. Um, I had that done in like less than a minute. It's kind of satisfying. I did this while the kids were in school, like right before I went to pick them up. This will be great for your kids to help you with since it's easy. But um, since the ghosts are white, that's why I wanted to use a yellow cheese so that they would stand out. And I almost forgot the pepperoni. I was so worried about getting those ghosts done, but luckily I didn't. So I'm just going to fill it up with as many pepperonis as I can fit on there. And I'm just placing the little mozzarella ghost on top. I'm also going to be making some little spiders to go on the pizza. So I'm really not that creative, like some of y'all tell me, which makes me feel good, but I'm just, I'm really not crafty and I'm, I just, I don't feel confident in it, but I tried my best here. So for the body, I'm using some green bell peppers and I'm just using a little piping tip to make like little circles. And originally I was going to use the peppers to make the spider legs, but that just wasn't giving spider vibes to me. So I grabbed my jar of banana peppers out of the fridge and I love the taste of banana peppers on pizza anyway. So I thought that would be really good. So I just took each ring, gave it a good shake and just cut those in half and I like the look of that a lot better. It was shorter and um, they're kind of curly. I just I thought that looked nice. So I only made two of them because I knew that my family 
would not eat the peppers or banana peppers. So I put that in the oven, just going by the box directions. And now I'm going to melt down some caramel to make some little caramel apple slices. So I just have those individually wrapped caramels. It took a while to get all that plastic off. But once I did, I transferred it to my saucepan. I added in a couple tablespoons of water. And honestly, I've never done that before. So I didn't realize how long it took to melt that caramel. Oh my goodness, it took so long. Now, typically you want to use a Granny Smith apple for that because of its tartness. I just wanted to use what I had on hand. It was still good, but it would have been a lot better with a Granny Smith because you know, it's just kind of too much sugar really, but I got all of those laid out on a cookie sheet. Um, I organized them to look nicer and then I'm just taking that melted caramel and I'm drizzling that all over the apple slices and I'm just kind of spreading it out. Now, I learned a few lessons while making these. Um, for one, if you're going to do the cookie sheet method, you want to spray it first because once that caramel gets on there, it's going to be stuck. And also, you want to dry off your apples before adding the caramel because after a while, that caramel was just wanting to slide off. So um, as you can see here, I'm just taking some Halloween M&Ms, placing that on top of the caramel. By the time I got that done, the pizza was out of the oven and I panicked because the ghost disappeared. So... Luckily, I had just enough cheese slices to make six more, so I just did that real quick and put it on top, and I saved the day, so just don't bake the cheese ghost if you do it. I served it with a side salad, and here's another look at those caramel apples. Really good if you eat them like right away. It's just not something that you can let sit there for a couple of hours. It'll be a mess. And then here is my plate. Like I said, I have the slice with the peppers on it and I just have a nice big side salad. We really enjoy this evening. We sat down and we watched Halloween Town to go along with it. On this night, I'm gonna be making some basic beef and cheese quesadillas, but I am gonna include how I made a really good quesadilla sauce that made these over the top. So I started by browning up a pound of ground beef, which is the perfect portion for four people. I drained off the grease and I'm just simply adding in a bunch of taco seasoning and some water. You could make your own taco seasoning mix if you want to. You can do different spices, but my kids have been requesting this, so I was happy to do that for them. So once it's nice and thick, I can move on to showing y'all this sauce. This is my first time ever making it. And I don't think I can ever have quesadillas without it now. It is seriously amazing. So it's a half a cup of mayonnaise and a half a cup of sour cream. You need a, I think it's three tablespoons of the pickled jalapeno juice. The recipe does also call for some chopped jalapenos to be added to it. I just want it to be a smooth sauce. So maybe I'll try it out next time, but I really liked it the way it was. So Again, this recipe will be in my description box for the exact measurements, but there's a lot of seasons going in there. There's paprika, cumin, chili powder, onion and garlic powder, salt. So as you can imagine, it is very well seasoned and super flavorful. So got that mixed together real good and set that in the fridge to let all those flavors meld together. I use the Tortilla Land Tortillas, which if you know, they come uncooked. Cook those up off camera. Got them all piled on that plate. And now I am gonna make some little jack-o'-lantern faces. I started by cutting just two small triangles for the eyes. And I'm also going to do that for the nose, just a small little triangle. The first one and anything that I make is always the roughest looking one. And that's always the one that I tend to film. But just know that the other ones went a little bit more smoother. But either way, my kids don't care. They're, they appreciate the effort. So... <laughs> Um, when it comes to the mouth, that's always the hardest part for me. I feel like I've done something similar to this in years past. And something about trying to make those mouths is just, I'm a mess. So <laughs> I cut out a lot of this footage because I didn't want it to be too long or y'all get bored or anything like that. So just know that this isn't like a real time or anything. I cut a lot of it out because it did take me a little bit too long. But I got that done to all four of them. And now I can start assembling these. So I grabbed my large skillet and I like to cook my quesadillas in butter. I'm going to place a tortilla down and I'm just grabbing whatever cheese is open. That happened to be some Monterey Jack. So I'm adding a good amount of that on the bottom, scooping on some of that seasoned taco meat, and I'm just kind of spreading it out. I could see here that I needed to add a little bit more. So going in with that. And then at this point, I'm going to take that homemade quesadilla sauce and drizzle it all over the beef. I swear it just took it to a 100. Y'all have to try it if you haven't before. 
I also added some more shredded cheese on top and then my face. I let that cook for a few minutes on each side until it was nice and golden brown. And as you can see, that cheese got like nice and brown and crispy, which I personally love. And I think this one turned out super cute. So I forgot the quesadilla is done. I'm just going to get the sides ready. I got this little dish at Home Goods a couple of years ago that says trick or treat. Super cute. I did make a homemade guacamole earlier that morning. So I'm going to add that to two of the little sections. And then in the middle, I'm just going to add some salsa. I found some orange and black tortilla chips at Target. So that worked out perfect. I'm putting it in this cute little oval orange dish that I got at Hobby Lobby. And here is the whole setup. So everyone's got the quesadilla. I also made my homemade Mexican rice that everyone loves. I did some chocolate covered pretzels with some Halloween sprinkles. Of course, we got the guacamole, salsa, and chips, and everything turned out so good. This one was probably my kid's favorite out of all of them, and then here is my plate. I just, I love the way that it turned out, and again, it was really good. Next up, I'm going to make some homemade ghost raviolis. Now, this one probably took the most effort out of anything in this video, but don't let that intimidate you. It really was not hard at all. So, I'm starting by making the ravioli filling. So, that was a half a cup of ricotta cheese, a quarter cup of shredded Parmesan cheese, and I did some garlic, salt, and pepper. The original recipe that I'm going to link called for like pear and nutmeg. I didn't really want to go that route, but... Instead of pasta, it uses these wonton wrappers, which I have never done. This is my first time doing something like this, so I was excited about it. I am going to be using that whole package of the wonton wrappers, so I definitely had to work in batches, and I just got those laid out on a cookie sheet. I made another little egg wash with the beaten egg, a little bit of water, and I just brushed all four edges of each wrapper. And then you're just going to take a small amount and place it into the middle of each wrapper. Now, you're supposed to add a very small amount, like a half a teaspoon amount, but I'm like incapable of doing that. I always want mine to be a little overstuffed when I make anything like this. So... Just know that I did end up having to double that ricotta mixture. Luckily, I had enough to do that. So this part at first took me a little bit to figure out how to fold these up. I watched some TikTok videos on it. But basically, you just bring each side up to the top. And then you just kind of pinch it around to kind of seal off that cheese. And as you can see, it kind of resembles a little ghost. So I'm just going to repeat that until all of my wrappers are gone. And then I'm going to place this cookie sheet in my deep freezer for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to transfer those to a Ziploc bag, keep them in the freezer. I actually did that two days in advance. So when dinner time rolled around two days later, it went by really quick. So to a saucepan, I'm heating up one cup of heavy whipping cream. Once it was steamy, I have it on about a medium heat. I added in a half a cup of some shredded Parmesan cheese. And once that was nice and melted, I just seasoned it with some kosher salt and black pepper. And that was it. This is like the easiest Alfredo sauce recipe I've ever made, but it was still really delicious. Like it definitely turned out better than I thought it would. It just has what, like four ingredients, and it was that good. But, you know, I boiled some salted water. I did like a low simmer, dropped the pasta, and I just let those cook for about three minutes. They were completely frozen. And now I'm going to assemble the plate. So I have some sauce on the bottom and I'm carefully placing the ravioli all around the sauce. And I know this portion looks small, but there was plenty to have seconds and thirds if anyone wanted it. I was just working in small batches since I had to make four plates. And, you know, by the time you take pictures and film, I just wanted everything to be nice and hot when everyone got to eat it. So I drizzled some more sauce over the top. I sprinkled everyone's plates with some dried parsley. And those were so amazing. They definitely exceeded my expectations. I thought for sure this was going to be a fail, but... It was probably my personal favorite. I served it with some steamed broccoli and some garlic breadsticks. And I also made some chocolate ice brownies with some candy corn pumpkin. So really, really overall happy with how this went. Everyone loved it. It was a huge hit. 
Lastly, I'm going to make a big old pot of some cozy, comforting tomato soup. So, I absolutely love tomato soup, and I've tried several recipes, but this one is so far my favorite. So, I have about three pounds of these beautiful tomatoes that I have washed well, taking them off the vine, quartering them, and putting them on my cookie sheet, as well as a big handful of fresh garlic. I gave everything a healthy drizzle of olive oil, and I'm just seasoning the tomatoes well with kosher salt and some black pepper. A lot of people roast onions, like diced up onions with this, but I'm going to replace that with onion powder. And then I'm just going to go in with my hands and massage everything really well, making sure that seasoning is coating everything. And you probably don't have to, but I decided to kind of stick everything skin side up. My oven is preheated to 450 degrees, and I let that roast for about 30 minutes, and then I flip the broiler on for a couple of minutes. So smells really good. Your whole house is going to smell amazing. I'm just taking a spoon and I'm transferring everything as well as that liquid on over to my food processor as well as a big handful of fresh basil. I would have done it in my blender but I knew it wasn't going to be big enough to hold all of this so this got the job done. So I pulsed that until it was smooth and then on over to my Dutch oven. I'm melting down a couple tablespoons of butter throwing in a couple tablespoons of flour, and I'm just going to let that cook down for a few minutes. Next, I'm going to add in this whole container of vegetable broth, which equals four cups. You can use any broth that you want to. It doesn't have to be vegetable broth, but I just kind of wanted to stick to the recipe. Vegetable broth doesn't bother me. I actually really like it in recipes, so that's what I'm doing. I'm also going to add in a tablespoon of just some regular granulated sugar, as well as that tomato garlic basil mixture. Here, I'm adding a healthy drizzle of heavy cream. That's optional, you don't have to do it, but if you wanna add a little bit of creaminess to it, definitely add that in there. And then lastly, I'm just seasoning it up with some kosher salt and some black pepper, and I'm just gonna let this simmer away. It doesn't have to cook for long, you're basically just heating it up, but you know, I had some other stuff to make along with it, so I just let it simmer on a lower heat for a little bit longer, but as you can see, it's beautiful. My only complaint with homemade tomato soups is this seeds in it. So the next day I ran it through a fine mesh strainer and it was perfect. Highly recommend. To go along with it, I'm going to make a jack-o'-lantern buffalo chicken dip skillet. So in this bowl, I have a rotisserie chicken shredded up, an eight ounce block of room temperature cream cheese, some sharp cheddar, Monterey Jack, a half a cup of ranch, and a half a cup of some buffalo sauce. Or you can use hot sauce, just whichever you ha have on hand. My favorite is Frank's, but Use whatever your favorite is. So I got all of that folded together and mixed really good. I'm gonna grab a can of pizza crust. And once again, I'm gonna attempt to make a jack-o'-lantern face. I much prefer using little cookie cutters. This right here is just not for me. I don't know if I would do this again, to be honest. It was a bit of a pain, but I have three triangles. That's what I started with. I'm placing that over to the side on a parchment lined cookie sheet because these do have to be pre-baked. I did a pretty bad job on the mouth, but again, the kids didn't care. I baked it according to the package directions. And then with what is left over, I'm just cutting it into squares. And I have some pepper jack cheese that I'm going to cube up. And I'm going to make some like little cheesy breads to go around the dip. So I'm just placing it all around the cheese cube, just pulling each side to the middle and then just rolling it into a ball so that nothing leaks out. And this recipe actually calls for two cans of pizza crust. So I made quite a bit. It was actually too much because you're going to place it all around the edges. So I couldn't fit them all in there. So what I did is the next day, I just baked what was left over like on its own and we dipped it in marinara sauce for lunch. Still really good. So in the middle of that, I'm going to place the buffalo chicken dip and I'm just spreading it out smooth and my oven is preheated to 400 degrees and I'm going to bake it for 35 minutes. Um, once it's pulled out of the oven, you melt down a couple tablespoons of butter in the microwave or stove, doesn't matter, however you melt your butter. And I just took my silicone brush and brushed that all over the top of the cheesy bread. And here I am just placing the little face on top of the dip. And with whatever butter was left over, I went ahead and added some of that over top of that as well. So it could, you know, obviously be nice and buttery and just look nice and like 
glazy, I guess, if that's a word. Here, I'm trying to make a spider web design on top of the tomato soup, and it was a fail. I put some sour cream in a Ziploc bag, snipped off the end, swirled it around, and you take a toothpick and kind of spread it out. This has worked for me in the past with broccoli cheddar soup, but I think where the soup was so thin, it didn't work out. So, oh well, it still looked wacky. I took some Nutter Butter cookies, uh, dipped it in white chocolate, and put some little chocolate chip eyes on it. Those were a hit. And then, of course, there's that buffalo chicken dip skillet. And we just took the cheesy bread and dipped it in the tomato soup, and that was very, very good. So I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video. I hope that it was fun for you Halloween lovers. Um, let me know down in the comments what are you going to make for your Halloween dinner. I want to thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in my next one.